this is Jane from Close to Home. Today I'm going to show you how to pin the back onto the quilt machine, a long arm quilt machine, and uh, how to free float the uh, batting and the top to begin quilting. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to find the center of the backing. So we're going to fold it in half, find the center, and then you want to find the center of the long arm frame, which is usually this little uh, crack here and it goes over here. And then you want to pull the leader out and you want to put the center. Now your backing has to be upside down because you want the wrong side facing up and the right side would be facing down. So you don't want to pin it on backwards. And then find a straight line here where these little tick marks are on the leader and start pinning. As you go along, do not stretch the backing. You want to get it evenly spaced. You don't have to put too many pins in on the backing because you're going to roll it up. And then it's going to take me a few minutes to pin it on, so I'll get back to you. So right now we've got the back pinned on. As you see, I have used one of the uh, tick marks uh, that it's printed on the leader to show that I'm even all the way across. I didn't use too many pins because it's going to roll on itself, so you don't need uh, too many pins on the tension. And the last pin down here Put, make sure that the two end pins are put in so you don't uh, nick yourself when you're rolling it up. The next step is to roll it evenly. If you're doing it yourself, you want to probably stand in the middle. Okay, and when you go around once, you'll see that the edge, the edges will fall neatly on top of each other on both sides. Be careful about running your hands down. You don't want to get poked with the pin. So you want to make sure that it's starting to roll evenly. And you don't want to keep spreading like this because you don't want to stretch everything. If you have a helper, you can each stand on one on one end and one on the other. It goes a little faster. And take off any threads that you see hanging on. I just wanted to show you that the seam, when you seam the backing, is going across the quilt. It's much better to go across the quilt um, than up and down because if your seam is going this way, every time you roll it, the seam is building on itself and then the two sides kind of sag when you get to the other end. So I usually have my students um, seam it across the, the middle of the quilt, it doesn't matter how many seams, so you come, up, come onto the seam when you're rolling it and then bingo, it's gone. Okay, we have now rolled the backing of your quilt onto the uh, rail, the top rail. And what you want to do is start somewhere near the center again and pin the top part of your backing fabric onto the other leader. <coughs> again, we are going to find one of the tick marks that you want to pin up to and then it will be the same all going all the way across. So we'll put it on the top part of the third tick mark and you're just going to pin it on from the middle that way and from the middle this way and it's basically the same as what you did before except your pins need to be a little closer together because the tension is going to be on this top piece and so you want the pins a little closer so you don't have a piece that's hanging down like that. So I'm pinning along this edge and I'm putting the pins maybe three or four inches apart, whereas on the other end, I put them probably five or six inches apart. Okay, and I've got the selvages on here. Uh, you can cut them off if you want, but um, you know, just for a sample, just so you can see where I'm pinning, I left them on. Okay, so we're going to now, we've pinned all of our backing on. The pins are about three or four inches apart. Uh, the outside pins face in so you don't get pricked on them and uh, we've got it pinned and we're going to be tensioning it onto these two rollers. 
I'm going to put the batting on. We free float the batting because um, each person that comes in and rents the machine uh, brings their own batting. So it's good to take it out of the package and let it rest for about 24 to 48 hours because it's uh, machine packaged and there's wrinkles in it. So you try to get some of the wrinkles out. No need to wash and no need to iron it. So again, you're going to find the center of the batting. I folded it in half. So we're going to find the center of the quilt again. Usually you would have four to six inches of batting and backing around the edge of your quilt that's just there for you to practice on. So you want to line up the batting across the top. This is going to be cut off anyway because you're going to put your quilt top down about four, four inches because there's four to six inches around the top as well. So you want to line this up as straight as possible. Get the wrinkles out of it by patting it down a little bit, rubbing it. You're going to get your quilt top and again you're going to make sure you've got it going in the right direction if there's a top and a bottom and you're just going to spread that on and you don't want to stretch it just lay that down there we are going to pin this on with a few pins just so it doesn't shift while we're tensioning everything up and getting our pantograph or other design ready I try to put them closest to the top and you want to leave this a little bit loose so you can get the pins in. If you tension it first you won't be able to get the pins in properly. Okay so now we have all of your three layers pinned down and you're going to start quilting either free motion or with a pantograph. Um, so you want to just set the tension on here and you want to roll this down so it clicks and you just want to run your hand across it to make sure everything's nice and even. And then you want to put your clamps on. On the batting and the backing only. And just put a slight bit of tension on it. It doesn't need to be a lot of tension. You're just going to clip it, clip the sides so they don't bounce up and down. And you lock those in and do the same on the other side. And that's how to put the quilt on the quilting frame. Thank you for watching. There are other videos on our Sew How Know How website uh, attached to our Close to Home website about threading the bobbin for the long arm, uh, threading the long arm sewing machine, and a few other things. Thank you. For more information on any of the products featured in this video, Call or visit one of our three store locations.